Hey guys, my name is Erich Bjarke, most people call me EG. I am a Hong Kong based photographer and filmmaker. And today I'm going to be talking about this Great Joy anamorphic lens. I got it recently and this is my first venture into anamorphics. I really like the anamorphic look. It's absolutely beautiful when you see it in movies and TV series. So I got curious, is this something that I can apply to my work? I looked into surprises and I found a Cook anamorphic 50mm T2.3 1.8x for 36,000 US dollars. And then I thought to myself, no, you're not going to go into an anamorphics at all. But then I also found a Vason 50mm T2.1 anamorphic lens and it's 1.8x as well. But again, that, that was still 8,000 US dollars. That's, that's out of my budget. So recently, or in 2022, Atlas introduced the Mercury 42mm T2.2 1.5X for $6,000. Still, all of this is too expensive for me. But uh, early 2020, Siri uh, announced some APS-C options and for anamorphics, but it's for APS-C. So I, I wasn't really convinced. Siri followed up a year later with a 50 millimeter T2.9 full frame. That lens was very exciting on paper, but when I saw the sample footage, I saw blue streaks and blue flares all over the image. And I just felt like that's not exactly subtle. So I wanted something a little bit more muted. And lo and behold, Mid 2022, Great Joy announced the 50mm T2.9 1.8x anamorphic, and the sample footage from this lens looked absolutely amazing. The flare character was, was very, very muted. I just went and ordered one on the Indiegogo. I think I was number 400 something on the order list, and I got it like two months ago. This seems to be a little bit of a trend. Lawa introduced their Nanomorph series this year, which is made for APS-C sized sensor and they have a pretty decent squeeze, 1.5 squeeze. But I decided to go with the Great Joy lens and this is, these are my thoughts on it. So again, why did I go with the Great Joy lens over the Siri lens? Flares. I just really feel like, you know, of course you want to have anamorphic characteristics in an anamorphic lens. But I just felt like it was like way overboard. It was way too much. Um, I went for the E-mount version, even though, uh, you know, maybe a more all-around version would be some other mount, which is easier to adapt to other mounts. Sony doesn't have an open gate option. Sony doesn't have a D-squeeze in the camera. And Sony does not have an IBIS mode that works for anamorphic lenses. I think Panasonic is probably the best option because they do have in-camera de-squeeze option and they do have a mode in their IPS for anamorphic lenses. And particularly for this squeeze factor that the Greyjoy has, which is 1.8x, the, the, the image is very, very thin and it does have like a little bit of vignette or I, I mean maybe even more than a vignette. There's like a, a very, very dark edge to the frame. Using it on a Sony, you kind of have to crop the image a little bit anyway, so it's not an issue, but you're still, you know, you're cropping a little bit into an image that ideally you want to use the whole sensor, right? So that's the whole point of having a full frame, but it, it, it kind of works on a Sony. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go all in on anamorphic. I'm, I'm, I'm a Sony shooter. I'm, I've been a Sony shooter for a long time, so I'm just, I, I just wanted to experiment. This is my first anamorphic lens. This lens does not have a constant squeeze ratio. At the minimum focus distance, I think it has something like 1.6 squeeze. And I don't know exactly where it creeps up, up to the 1.8x mark. But to, to me, this is not really that much of an issue. I mean, I'm kind of fine with having like a little bit of distortion. I'm, I'm kind of fine with having like the image not exactly pristine or perfect, having like some wonky bits to it. There, uh, I watched a TV series not too long ago called The Sandman on Netflix and that TV series had kind of a little odd look to it. It looked like the image was a little bit stretched or skewed in, in an odd way. 
I googled it and I read up about it and it seems like it was a deliberate creative choice. So I don't mind this grease ratio not being constant, honestly. Uh, other areas that I looked into before getting this anamorphic lens was uh, fakeomorphics. And I got here a Helios 58mm 44M, which has been modified. Let me see if I can show you. Uh, you can see it a little bit inside and when you look into the lens that it has like this oval shape to it Which gives you the anamorphic character in the in the background blur, but it also has like a fishing line or a line through the whole Aperture right in the middle and this gives you like that anamorphic streak. I mean, it's It's not perfect. It flares a lot and I think like the cutout uh, that makes the aperture oval kind of uh, makes the it's it's an f2 lens and it becomes like probably like an f2.8 or even closer to an f4 lens in terms of brightness but it's a i mean i got this on ebay oh by the way i'm banned on ebay and i asked them why they wouldn't tell me i have a lifetime ban on ebay so all i can buy is this one lens and i won't be able to buy more because the guy that made this lens in ukraine uh, he only sells them on eBay, so I won't be able to buy another one or a different one. So, anyway, I'll, I could make another separate video on this one. Let's st let's stick to the topic. So, you have $1,500 in your pocket, and you're looking at options. How do I make my image more cinematic? What are my options? What, what, what should I spend my money on if I really want to make my work a little bit more unique or give it a little bit of character? Um... The Great Joy Lens is a good option. It's a great option. It's expensive. It's it's big. Another option that you could also go with is this. The 35mm f1.2. It's it's a very similarly sized lens. And I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think they're very uh, comparable in terms of anything except maybe field of view. Um, they're, they're a completely different experience in terms of using them and... and and, uh, and and the look that comes out of them. The 35 millimeter obviously blurs the background way more, um, but I really enjoy the look and the character of the anamorphic lens. It's, uh, you know, in a world where everyone's on YouTube and everyone has like very, very good equipment and, and great lens options, you know, you gotta, you gotta try to find ways to, to make your work or make your image look a little bit more unique. For me, that is this whole experiment. That's why I went into the Greyjoy lens, um, and I'm, I'm pretty happy about it so far, but it's been a pain, I'm not gonna lie. It's very difficult to look at the image without the de-squeeze in the Sony, and you know, the focus peaking helps, but I do find myself like punching in on the image for critical focus, and because of the eyepiece, it's not really built for for anamorphic lenses as I punch in and, and I tweak I, they're like these little camera shakes pros I'd say the pros of the great joy lens is price image quality and image character for the cons I would say it's aperture it's it's not super bright it's t2.9 I'd say it's weight and I would say it like one huge issue is the focus throw. I mean this thing to go like all the way from minimal to infinity, it's 270 degrees of a focus throw. That's a long twist and a long turn. So I find that if I'm shooting something that's like moving fast or if there's quick action happening, I'm lost. Like the this is this does not work for that so keep that in mind unless you have like someone that's focus pulling for you or you're just like supremely good at focus pulling or alternatively if you have a, a monitor that has d squeeze on it and it has like good resolution so you can really see what you're doing that might be something to look into uh okay i think that just about sums up everything that i think about this lens let me know in the comments if you have some questions if you have any ideas for tests if you have any other ideas for future videos let me know bye